purpose of the conference today, I think, is to bring a unique blend of thinking and people together. This is a world-class gathering of brilliant business leaders, people that have built world-beating companies in their own right. Uh, we have Lord Bellamura, we have Sir Rod Aldridge, John Cridlin, the Director General of the CBI, the Minister for Skills. We have a range of education leaders, really second to none. There's a hurricane of change that is facing not only the nation, but colleges on a day-to-day -day basis. These two days are going to be an absolute masterclass in practical expressions of how to do their work on the ground. Good morning and welcome to... The, the reason I chose to come to the conference today here was to get a feel for what other colleges are doing, what ideas they have and, and what more we could be doing. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please do welcome Sir Rod Aldridge on stage. With the ethos of Gazelle in what they're trying to do with their colleges are very similar to what I think about entrepreneurship because I think it's about the attributes of an entrepreneur, you know, only working in a team but being passionate, being determined, understanding risk, not being afraid of risk, and being creative. That magic fairy dust of entrepreneurship. For too long we thought education and business were different. Actually what we need are dynamic partnerships. College principals need to identify where they think their business, the college, is going and then find some partners in the community. To me as an entrepreneur, the concept of Gazelle Colleges is music to my ears. Companies that really succeed are driven by amazing leaders and that is infectious. It goes right through to the students themselves and it's that attitude that counts more than anything else. energy that's in the room, the amount of experience that everybody's being able to share. All of that has been very positive today. Over the course of the two days we've got a number of breakout sessions. The breakout sessions will be useful for delegates, I think, because it gives them an opportunity to discuss with their peers, with their colleagues, some of the um, challenges, some of the issues that FE is currently facing. The breakout session on commercial learning was really trying to show that there are new markets out there and that as we are creating opportunities for our students, we ourselves need to model that same mindset and that entrepreneurship is about practice. We can't just teach it without practicing it. Only by educating to a high standard. To the Colleges that are innovative, that are self-confident, uh, that have strong leadership and good governance because this is all about improving standards for learners. It's about understanding where we're going as a society. Working with the Gazelle has been a phenomenal experience for us because obviously as an organisation we've got this great perspective on where technology is and where it's going. So the whole opportunity of technology... What are the skills, not what are the technologies, but what are the human skills that people are really going to need in order to be successful? I'm from a Gazelle College myself, from City College Plymouth, and we do use technology a lot. They're not just looking at things like um, a textbook, which isn't very interactive and isn't very fun. You can put it into a module, onto a, onto a laptop or a tablet, and they really engage the students. Well, I mean, it was fabulous that the His Royal Highness the Duke of York came in to the conference. The Duke of York is a fantastic supporter of enterprise and entrepreneurship, particularly for young people. Your first task as a team is in the next 30 seconds. We are hoping to give these leaders a, a sense of design thinking, what it is and, and what it can do for them. So we gave some external inspiration, analogous situations, other businesses are creating new business models, and then had the group actually brainstorm. And uh, It was impressive to see the radical kinds of ideas people were coming up with and then prototype those ideas by storyboarding them. It never ceases to amaze me some of the solutions that you come out with. So some of the things that we talked about in terms of developing online science labs, I'm definitely going to take back and get on with. We've got three big priority areas at the moment. Uh, improving maths and English, we're here to support professionalism and standards across the sector. And in particular, we're focusing on English and maths, leadership and working together with employers to create a really strategic partnership in vocational training. Technology is a creative industry. My keynote speech today was really uh, designed to forge a stronger partnership in people's mind between the, the importance of these science, technology, engineering, mathematics subjects and encouraging our youngsters to actually want to take them up because our youngsters are opting out. I think when we're very young, we're fascinated by the sciences and how things are made. We like to take them apart and have a look. And then somehow that's lost in the system. Whereas actually curiosity is something we can keep for life. 
curious employees continue to learn, continue to challenge and make better business people. It's about showing young people that skills like maths and science aren't just for the few, they're for the many, that you need them in all walks of life. Really. Today was all about STEM and I'm passionate that the sector really responds to that. If you study math or physics, that doesn't mean that you're going to be in a lab coat. It, it opens up and de demystifies the myriad of fabulous careers that you can have if you study those subjects already. I can't believe anybody is leaving the conference without a real energised view of the world for the future. There's no better speaker to actually finish off this conference. Ladies and gentlemen, please do welcome Doug Richard. The context of entrepreneurship and becoming entrepreneurial is that you essentially have to permit people to take risks that are outside the boundaries of the normal functioning of a large business. And what you have to do essentially is you have to put the organization in peril. Because if there is no risk, there's no reward. And therefore people have to be free to make autonomous decisions. And unless we give people that permission and freedom, nothing happens. It was the best program that's been on the radar for over a year. It stretched my own learning and it was practical and we've gained so much from it. Well I think that what's been great is to see just how many people have demonstrably engaged in the questioning. I believe there's every indication that people have learned some of the ways in which we can transform colleges to become more self-sufficient, more enterprising and to deliver better value for their students and that seems to me to be a good outcome.